Good afternoon, YouTube. So I was working on the blade guide on my 7x12 horizontal vertical bandsaw, and I've been having some trouble with the blade wanting to tip in here, and that was related to these rollers being a little too far apart. The reason I have this off is because these things were seized up in here. I couldn't get them to move, so it was just easier to try to take this thing off, and I pulled the nuts and washers off of the studs there and I could get one of them to move but not the other one so I've soaked them with a bit of uh, penetrating oil and then I've now cleaned these up on the wire wheel and got them nice and shiny got all the rust off of them I've had these apart a few times and I've never really paid attention here but if you notice this one if I spin the uh, shaft in the bearings this one is centered got a nice perfect circle it's basically a shoulder there there's a shoulder the bearings push on to this side held on with a c-clip and then over here there's a shoulder that goes through here and then there's thread for the nut and then on top there's a flat so you can turn this to adjust it and the other one's the same Except, if you notice this one, if I turn the, the shaft, you'll see this one is eccentric. There it's over that way, and here it's over this way. So I was assuming both of these shafts were eccentric, and it didn't matter which side you put them on. But I had the eccentric one on this side, and I have the centered one over on the outside. Yes, you can see the blade guide would normally sit up here. And what it's got to do is your drive wheel is on that axis. And you've got to twist the blade around, push the bottom of the blade out, and the top of the blade in. Because it's pretty easy to push the top in, but it's it's really hard to twist the bottom out. So I think the constant pressure on this one, since I had the eccentric one there, it kept pushing or twisting this thing around and opening up the gap. So I think I'm gonna swap these, put the fixed post here and the adjustable one there and see how that works. Okay, I got the blade guide mounted back up there. Let's see if I can tighten this down. It's hard with that bolt head in the way. That's why I took everything out so I could actually get to it. But I think that's pretty tight. But yeah, I think the problem was since I had the adjustable one on the inside, the blade would go over here and it was cutting kind of in. The thing is you would set your angle nice and square there, but it would cut a couple of degrees in. Let's, let's check this one here. I'll just give this guy a little bit of a tweak here. Let's see what that looks like. Uh, now I think I went too far in. I think it has to come over this way a little bit. Yeah, a little too much. <laughs> it's touchy when you get close in there. Just barely move it. Yeah, so I've got my square on the bed there and we'll just slide that over get my light behind there yeah that, i think that's pretty close so yeah this was one of the pieces i cut so the saw was going this way and you can see how it cut in it was cutting in like that direction the vise was square to the blade you can see now it actually isn't there's a little bit of a offset there but this was the vertical you can see that's nice and square I had a nice vertical cut I couldn't get a square cut in both directions there it was always off so much force on this inside bearing being that it was adjustable it was pushing it farther over that way and then making the blade guide loose so then I was trying to compensate by adjusting the angle here but that really wasn't helping. That's what caused this problem. I could adjust the angle to fix the verticalness of the cut, 
but then doing so I threw off the squareness of the cut and then if I tried to adjust the squareness then the vertical went out <laughs> so I was just chasing back and forth and I couldn't get both things to get fixed at the same time so yeah I just figured take it apart and figure out what's going on I should probably think about checking this one too like I say I hadn't paid attention that one of these bearing posts is eccentric and the other one is concentric let's see how vertical this goes here it's touching the square pretty much the whole way up and down Okay, let's take a test cut here. Okay, that came out pretty good. There's the top side, so going down the direction of the cut there. And pretty, pretty close. I mean, that's about as close as I can get it. There's a very slight little wiggle. And then if we go in the direction of the cross cut, it's still off a little tiny bit. You can see there's a little bit of a wiggle there. So I'm using this plastic as kind of a test thing since I have to cut a bunch of pieces of this. I find that these blades cut kind of funny in plastic. They kind of tend to wander a little bit more. But I figure I'm making about eight cuts in this. So every time you adjust the blade guide, you also have to then recheck the fixed jaw on the vise, make sure it's still square, because all those things matter. And then you also have to check the length of the part, because if I move the blade too much, then the length of the cut gets too short, and then I have a piece that's not long enough. So I think that's looking a lot better. Definitely a lot better than it was, for sure. And the, the idea here is I want to get these parts cut pretty square for a couple of reasons. So the first reason is they chuck up in the lathe square, so you just put them in the chuck and drill them and face them. The other parts I had, you had to adjust the part to sit square in the jaws. The end wasn't square, so you had to do a couple of cleanup passes. And then the other reason is, if the saw is cutting crooked, you've got to allow for those cleanup passes, so you use up more material. So the straighter the cut can be, the less material you waste, because you can cut the parts a lot closer to the finished size. So this, again, is the inside bearing. This is the outside. And I'll flip the saw on here. And you can see how this bearing is spinning because there's pressure on the blade getting it to twist from the drive wheel that's like lined up like this. It's got to get twisted over so it's lined up plumb. So there's a lot of pressure on this bearing with the blade trying to go that way. Because I, I didn't really find out in the uh, manual, they don't really show you any super detail. They kind of just give you an exploded view and say, here's all the parts. And they don't really tell you it must go this way. At least I will remember that next time I'm working on this. I can go refer to this video and take a look back at that and not make that mistake again. So anyway, hope that helps someone. And as always, thanks for watching.